Coming up, we're going to be reviewing Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7, Episode 9, Old Friends Not Forgotten. Ahsoka is definitely not forgotten in this one. And neither is her attitude either. Welcome back to Eye to Eye, Disney Through Our Eyes. I'm Kyle. And I'm Jessica. And on this episode, it's time to review and give our five takeaways of the latest episode of The Clone War Season 7. This is Old Friends Not Forgotten. It's a play off of uh, the old Star Wars term there. Oh. Old friend, you know, Yoda just said, old friends long gone or something like that. I was thinking it reminded me of the song you sing in Girl Scouts, you know. Do make, what? Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver, the other is gold. You know that song? How are, you amaze me on every single one of these videos. Like, you bring in some reference from like, I, it, when I woke up this morning, which is very early by the way, I had no clue you were going to be referencing Girl Scouts in this one. I mean, I'm just saying, that's what the title reminded me what of. What are you, you going to like, compare tagalongs to Ahsoka now? Like, well, is that how this there is There are more to the Girl Scouts than just cookies. I, I understand that. Just like there's more to Ahsoka than just lightsabers. I understand that, but what do you think of first when you think of the Girl Scouts? Cookies. Mm -hmm. I mean, just... I, I, I think of camping, but <laughs> that's why I was a terrible Girl Scout. Enough with the Girl Scouts. This is about Star Wars. All these people okay. are like, what are you doing? You're making me hungry now. All right, so we do these a little differently, just like we did last time. We're just doing our five takeaways, but it kind of tells the story of this episode as we go throughout the way we break it down. Uh, so we'll kind of talk about each one of those points and uh, give you a big question at the end of this. So Jessica, our first takeaway would be... So are we doing these in reverse order? Yes, now five down number to five. one. Okay, so number five for us was the different feel from this beginning of a new arc to the last two arcs. So yes. it just felt completely different. It started off with like the intro being different. I guess that's what you call yes. it, the intro. I call like, it Like where intro. it says the Lucasfilm thing. Then my favorite, the Clone Wars was in red. Why do you, it was a little, I don't, I don't know. There's just some symbolism behind it. I have a concern that you're really fascinated with red things. Just, that just means like it's Are you a Sith? being intense. Are you a Sith? Yes. Oh, yes you are. Call me Darth Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so gonna do that now. Good. Now look, yes, obviously the red symbolizes darkness. We know what's coming. This is leading Evil. up to episode three and all that kind of stuff. It intertwines. But, you know, what is up with the whole Lucasfilm limited thing? At right. the beginning? There's no, I mean, they do have the, the coming up, you know, guy talking, but there's no quote at the beginning. It's not the, the usual happy, dun, 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 you know, that kind of, that tone. It's completely different. I, I, I don't know if I like that or not. I mean, I guess I'm not mad about it. My question about this is, is this like a whole, are they going to take this arc of four episodes here to close out the Clone Wars and make like a separate like film about it? Like put them together and make it call it the Siege of Mandalore. I mean, because it feels so I feel different. like that's a way, okay, that we just took a turn. Really, I'm just saying. Really sharp turn. And just, that's what it feels. This feels like a completely separate season within this season, the way this whole thing opened up. There's a, there's a huge time jump too. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Anakin's hair is longer. Everybody looks different. It just doesn't feel the same. Okay, next point. Next point would be the tension at the reunion between Ahsoka, Anakin, Obi-Wan, everybody. I mean, like... You, it was very palpable. It was palpable like Palpatine. Mm. No. Oh, um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was awkward. Obviously there's, you know, the feelings of Anakin as the master, you know, there's that tension. But the thing that I found most interesting was how she and Obi-Wan were kind of getting at each other's throats a yeah. little bit. I never got that sense in the previous episodes. And I know you haven't watched anything outside of the season, right? but that just seemed a little quick, didn't it? Like how she was, yeah, like I, angsty towards him. That's what I said, like, when she's got her attitude, you know? That's true. She did have a little attitude. She was very sassy. You should relate well with that, shouldn't you? <laughs> it is like six o'clock in the morning. I now. am not going to survive this episode no, now at not. this point. Yeah, the tension was there. It was just, you know, and oh, she was called Fulcrum, too. Like, she took the code name Fulcrum. Yeah, that was so confusing for me. So this ties into Rebels uh, with Saw Gerrera, all that stuff. It's the first time, at least in the chronological timeline that it, she has been referred to as Fulcrum. So for all of you that know all the interconnectivity of all that, it's uh, what 
you know, basically that leads up to point number three. The number three was the battle at Coruscant was at the same time. Yes. So this is going to be a lot of connected tissue leading to Rebels to episode three. So literally as the reunion is happening, we have a big, you even commented on the siren. You're like, is that a dinosaur? Yeah, it just sounded very weird. Like in the middle of Anakin giving her this prize, it was like, ah! One more time, how was it no. again? <laughs> She's referring to the sirens we all know from Star Wars. Like, think about it. Yeah, when, we all know. But think about it. Like, okay, think back to episode four, the Death Star, when it's about to fire, it goes, ooh, ooh. Don't remember that. Not at all. Just went over you. Well, mm -hmm. that's what the dinosaur is to Jessica. <laughs> It's the weird noise from the dinosaur. Um, but yeah, so this leads into episode three, all that, the Battle of Coruscant, where how they open up episode three. And I think, you know, I was a little sad because I guess this means that they're gonna be separate. It's fine, but I was kind of hoping to see Anakin and Ahsoka together again one more time. I mean, you can't have everything. And, and are we sure that they're not gonna be together one more time? That's like, it's a great question. And yeah, I don't know. It could don't, be. You don't ruin my question. <laughs> I'm not going to take it away from you. The other thing to note from this is that uh, Commander Cody is also not Commander Cody, but Captain Rex becomes Commander because Ahsoka cannot take the lead on this right. thing. So uh, there's all this going into play here. The 501st is split up. They had their, how'd you like their little helmets? Oh, where they looked just like Ahsoka? Yeah. I thought that was really cool. I th it, was it was a really nice neat. tribute. It's, I think it's what sets apart the clone troopers from the stormtroopers. You know, there's some fondness there. They're just not stoic soldiers that shoot aimlessly at things. That's what I That's like. That's what I would do. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, I'm just saying, if I was one of these people, I would just shoot aimlessly because I would have no hope of surviving. Point number two, Ahsoka still has it as a Jedi. Mm -hmm. I mean, I say as a Jedi because she's not a she's Jedi. She's not a Jedi. But she just has their powers. She's got them skills, man. Right. I mean, I was impressed. What did you think about her? So I loved how she was like very, I don't know, maybe the word's unselfish when she was using her powers. Yeah. Like when she got the guy out of the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what that thing's called. But anyway, you know, she took Shit. the, she took her lightsaber and like cut him out because he couldn't get out and save himself. So I just, I like that she uses her powers for good and well, not evil. So, I mean, the rest of the Jedi do, mm -hmm. but. Anakin, have you met him? I don't know a lot. Wait, look, I don't know him. There's a, Anakin uses them for good at this point in time. Yeah, but he, then episode three, you remember? <laughs> yes, I remember what happens. No, I completely forgot what happens to him in the end. Well, I'm just saying, like... But he, he let his emotions succumb to the dark side. So I'm just saying, if I become a serial killer tomorrow... This is taking a dark turn in this episode. No, but listen, if I become a serial killer tomorrow, are y'all going to remember all the good things I did Prior to that, no, you're gonna remember me being a serial killer. Wish I had a sign I could bring it right now. Please send help. Yeah, she's still really good as uh, you know, doing all the little Jedi things. And something I guess you and I both noticed: the lightsabers seem to be different sizes yeah. now. I felt like previously they were both the same size. They were both on the shorter side, and that's why she had the two. But now she's got like a full one, and then like it's almost like a dagger yeah. kind of one. Yeah. But I kind of like cool. that because. You see what's going on here? That's she's saying did. she's become a serial killer. She's like faking this motion at me. Like, well, you're saying if I had a little lightsaber, that's what I would do with it. Like I wouldn't do all the lightsaber moves. I would just like use it like as a sword. Actually, anyway. not a sword. Like a little, like a chest knife. Anyway, the connection between her and her troops is still there and it's very evident and which makes her a great leader, even though she's not the commander. And you know, I'm happy that Captain Rex got promoted to commander because I love Captain Rex. Our final takeaway, Jessica. What final takeaway is that Darth Maul planned this all along. Of course. Yeah. Magnavit, you Sith, you just find a way to plan your little things out. Uh, so apparently, 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 this is another plot again to try to kill Obi Wan Kenobi. Which, dude, can you get a different plan? I mean, that's been his whole life. As I mean, at least he's consistent. <laughs> You keep siding with the bad guys. In I'm wearing episode. black. I never wear black. I just feel like I'm on the dark side today. Well, you're always on the and dark it's, side. Again, 6 a.m. So. Day. Yes. So, the Dar Darth Maul is back again. He's trying to kill Obi-Wan again. He even says when he traps uh, Ahsoka and the rest of the troops down below. A quick note it seems like Captain, excuse me, Commander Rex died. 
Well, but we, you we said know, that we know he did not. We know he did not, but they sure do set it up in this one. That yeah, he, yeah. he at least he appears. He looked very to... dead. I thought he was dead until you said that, no, he comes back in Rebels or something. Yes. So, well, I haven't watched that. Shocker. So, we're at a pretty low point here where this whole thing was a trap. You know, they even... It's a trap. They, they got into Mandalore very quickly and, you know, took control of everything. We knew a little this too. was not going to go well like, when is, when they get there so fast. I'm like, it's uh, like this battle of uh, the Siege of Mandalore is going to go really go quickly well. on this one. Obi-Wan is not there, so Darth Maul has to make do with what he has in front of him. And that is Ahsoka, which makes me wonder no, he's cool. how this thing is going to play out. So, now our big questions taking away from this episode, Jessica, what's yours? I just want to know if that is the last meeting of Anakin and Ahsoka, because you seem to think it is. It sure feels like it. I don't, I Why would you give a longing look at someone like, and then just have this dramatic music playing? I don't, I think they'll meet again. There's, there's three episodes left. What? They have to see each other one more time, right? Maybe they see each other like in a hologram, but not, I, I think this that is the counts. last time. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm not, mine is related. My final question out of this is, will any of the Jedi come help? Because I think they're going to kind of have to the way things are now. I know Ahsoka is capable. So is Bo-Katan and her rebels from the Mandalorians. I just, there's got to be a little bit of assistance from the Jedi. Yep. And I'm wondering if that's what we're going to see going forward. So that is our big takeaways from five of them from this episode of the final arc. Clone Wars Season 7. We're in the final countdown right now. Finally. finally, finally, finally. So we want to know from you what your big takeaways from this are. Let us know down there in the comments section below. We're also going to have a poll. Make sure you vote in that. And we'll also be putting some playlists up here if you want to watch the rest of our reviews from Clone Wars Season 7. What else should they do, Jess? If you haven't already, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. That's all we have for you in this edition of i 2 i but until we assemble again, may the Force be with you. And we'll see you real soon. Bye, guys. I'm going to have one of my two Star Wars shirts in like Oh, you're fine. Baby, I'm looking at myself and I don't look good. Good morning to everybody. What? <laughs> My face looks puffy. It does. It looks very, very puffy. Clone Wars Season 7 started. Ahsoka's back and so is her sass.